What's going on guys? First of all, I want to shout out to all of the well-constructed comments in the comment section. I really appreciate you guys. And in this video, we're going to talk about why people are poor, the lack of a presence of wealth building behaviors. Notice I said behaviors. It's not just one behavior. And I'm about to list a few issues that you will see with the general population that inhibits building wealth and it's a behavior and behaviors are deeply, deeply rooted. The first behavior is the inability to hold on to money. There's talks of a fourth or fifth, I don't even know, stimulus check, $1,400. I believe. Now, what happened when the stimulus checks came out? The economy boom. Uh, there's a restaurant that I was going to when they were issuing stimulus checks that the wait was an hour and a half. It's called Snooze. It's on Roswell Road. Now, I don't even have to hit the wait list. I can walk in there anytime I want to because with the lack of stimulus money, businesses are not that busy because one of the things that happens, and this is a big, 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 big issue, is the lack of holding on to money. Now, I call this one of my superpowers. I've literally held on to seven figures for three years. I didn't invest it. I didn't spend it. I just held on to it. And this right here is the number one wealth building behavior. The ability to have money and the ability to sit it somewhere and not touch it. That's the number one wealth building behavior because number one, you can have some money and it doesn't have to be spent. It doesn't have to go somewhere. Number two, and this is huge, this is huge. Living your life in a manner where you're not doing dumb stuff. Okay, this is, we got to go into it. Uh, since I have allowed myself to, well, I've opened myself to dealing with folks I normally wouldn't deal with. And I, I saw like people doing financially dumb things like I'm about to go ahead like she's mad at me I don't really care you hate your job right but that job keeps you from being one of the reset people but you hate your job you're sick and tired of it you join the great resignation you quit your job and then you sit at home and you spend your 401k money with no more money coming in. That is financially stupid. And this is something a lot of people do. I recently was talking to someone that just quit their job and they're like, I got savings. And what they're doing, they're taking trips. They're spending money. They're redecorating their apartment. They're spending money like that. And they don't have no more money coming in. And I can tell you, anyone that has saved a significant amount of money, and we would call a significant amount of money as $10,000 or more, that once they start spending it, it goes way faster. It's kind of like the car rental business. The car rental business, I got my um, tax statement. I made $128,000 in the car business, but I had $150,000 in repairs. Then I had insurance. Then I had office rent. Then I had other costs. So there was money coming in, but the expense ratio was higher. And that's what you will have when you start spending saved money with no more money coming in. And I am seeing people do this because they're just tired. I'm about to say something that may sound a little dismissive. We have wuss nation. You think your grandparents quit their jobs because they were tired? 
You think your mom and dad quit their jobs because they were tired? No, they didn't, because they had you. They had you to take care of. So they went to work day after day, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, because they had responsibilities. And this group of people who had responsibilities, who held their nose and went to work for jobs they didn't like, work for companies they didn't like, work for bosses they didn't like, these people have paid off houses and are able to retire while you, because you can't hold on to money, number two, you're making financially dumb decisions because you don't factor in the long term, you have no wealth, none, none. You don't have a paid off house. Shoot, you don't even have a paid off car. You've got student loans, you got credit cards, you got other debt, dumb debt, and then you come to YouTube and then someone says those magical words, generational wealth, and we're about to jump into that. Generational wealth implies that you're leaving money for the next generation, correct? How many people have kids? White people are not reproducing at a number to replace. White people are dying out. We have a lot of people, a lot of men, a lot of women who are in their 50s to their 60s, never been married, don't have any children. What generation you gonna leave the wealth to? You, there's nobody. This is the first time in the history of America that we had all of these elderly, single people. We've got men, never been married, and don't have no children. We've got women, never been married, never had no children. They're 60 years old. They're adopting cats. They're adopting dogs. Because the cats and dogs are their children because they never had any real children. And here's the thing. And this is with generational wealth. You must have the desire to reproduce for generational wealth. Because if you are a single man or woman and you die, unless you die, if you die with a will and you bequeath your money to your nieces and, and uh, nephews, that's a form of generational wealth. But more than likely, you're just gonna die and your money's gonna go to the state. So there's no generational wealth because people keep talking about generational debt wealth without the first factor of creating a family. And like I've expressed here on this YouTube channel that, you know, I want to get married, have a family. And every time I mention that, I get, don't do it. Don't get married. Don't do it. Stay single. And I see comments, you know, Glendon talks about getting married. Glendon, not married and very successful. I'm about to tell you something. I'm about to say something to you. Having money, having freedom, having time, and not having anyone to enjoy that stuff with sucks. It absolutely sucks. And I've never been in that position because I've always dated multiple women. So there was always someone around in orbit to do things with. But now I'm at a point where I want something of more substance and I'm willing to reformat myself to get that because that's what I'm working on. Because keep it the buck. 10 years from now, I'm gonna be old. I'm gonna be old, man. And I need to pull while I can still pull. That, I mean, fortunately, God bless with me with really good genetics because I've never looked my age. But when I turn 65, I'm going to look my age. It's just facts. I may look good, but I'm going to be 65 years of old. And one of the things that I could say as a person who has abundance, who has wealth, uh, having that and being by yourself absolutely sucks. And this is why I've consistently had girlfriends 
and this is why I now have another one. Because going forward, I am not going to die alone. And I'm about to go somewhere with this. Right now, there's a ton of old men, and I mean old, 60, 65, 70 years old, on the Sugar Baby websites, dangling money in front of these young girls who are desperate, who've made many bad financial decisions. And I'm like, they ain't a good look. At 70 years old, if you don't have children and grandchildren and a family and a circle of friends, I feel that you failed at life. Now, you might not have children, but you should at least have a circle of friends. You should at least have a collection, a collective of people that know you, that you can visit, that you can hang out with. And this kind of moves towards like wealth building behavior without the reason to build wealth is why I think a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people are struggling because when I talked about how these people are wired differently, like Timothy Ward, Sheeta on the loose, um, the upgrade and these other people who have, because this is the thing I've noticed for all these people, they don't want to be terribly productive, which is another anti wealth building behavior. Cause she did on the loose when she was an attorney and she was making money and buying stuff. She was doing wealth building behavior. Then she just kicked it in low gear. She has no children. She's not married. It's just her, which made it easy for her to move to Mexico. Because when I was growing up, it was hard as hell to get old people out their house. They bought their house. They built their house. They invested in their house and they died in that house. You couldn't just like move them out their house. They like, I ain't leaving. This is my house. So from a community standpoint, we're fragmenting uh, my video, the social savages. Right now, one of the things I consistently see is everyone wants attention and they will do whatever they can to get attention, whatever they can. And with this, fragmentation of society, we have people who are not building wealth because they don't have no one to build wealth for. Let me say this again. We have people who are not building wealth because they have no one to build wealth for, which is another reason that people are poor. I was out at the Capitol Grill last night and on the wall was the founder of Coca-Cola. And on this wall was Martin Luther King. And on this other wall was Margaret, Margaret, Mitchell, Margaret Mitchell, who wrote Gone with the Wind. And I was consistently seeing people who have been dead for decades. Martin Luther King, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Martin Luther King been dead 50 years. Still celebrated. Still held in high self-esteem. Right? And now we have a society of people who are just existing, who are just living, who are just, um, they're just existing. They have no purpose to build wealth because there's no one else there. There's no one. And this is one of the reasons, number one reason that people don't have wealth is they can't hold on to money. Number two reason they don't have wealth is they do dumb stuff. I mean, dumb stuff like quitting your job when you don't have anything else. Because here, here's the thing, like right now I am at a pause because I'm not really doing my online course thing. I'm not doing a lot of consulting and I have a chunk of money. But guess what? I still have money coming in. I will never, ever just stop and start eating off my money without having some more money coming in. This is one of the biggest issues right now with this pandemic 
and we had all these people quit their jobs and we had all these people because the pandemic gave people a snapshot of what their life could be if they had money and time. And that snapshot, I, I, I'm like, I'm addicted. I couldn't like, one of the reasons I hated the car business so much is it took that away from me. It took my freedom. It took my time. It made me overly responsible because I had, like, I let someone borrow a car, right? And once again, this is from a renter. A renter hit something and knocked the car out of alignment. And I bought this tire in August and the tire was showing belt because it's been knocked out of alignment. And I got pissed because I hate these renters. Cause they do stuff to cars and they never tell you. They never tell you. And then later on you find out that there's some, like right now I got a bunch of tickets right here on my counter and I got three more tickets. I hated these renters cause they forced me to be accountable to deal with stuff I frankly don't want to deal with. Why are you driving getting ticket after ticket after ticket after ticket? You know why? Cause you're a demo worthless person. You don't care. You simply don't care. But I, as the owner, am responsible for your carelessness. And I hate that. And that's one of the reasons I'm out the car rental business. I got one rented, and when it comes back, I'm not renting any more out. I am not renting any more out because I am seeing, and this is a shift. Number one, the inability to hold on to money. Like, I don't have my wallet on me, but actually, I got I got some cash. Right? I got $405 on me, and I got like a thousand bucks in, in my wallet, right? The inability, I've had this $400 for about three, four weeks, because uh, I had to um, pay for the tires, this is my car. And I'm just sitting here like, man. Because one of the things that was good for me with the car rental business is I got to see how people were living. The number of people who were living in the hotel, the number of people who would literally freak out. And someone left a comment like $80. All right, I am sorry if I offend you when I say $80 ain't no money. I am sorry that you are that worthless. That if $80 makes you or breaks you or creates a budgetary crisis, I am sorry for you because you are clearly, clearly, clearly not doing the right things in life. Um, I am going to lose, well, I'm not gonna lose because it's gonna take me two years to recoup that $400,000 through depreciation and filing my taxes. Two years to get my 400K back. I'm probably gonna come on top about almost 100K after it's all said and done. So I'm not losing money, but once again, I'm playing the corporate game. I have active businesses. I have things, I, I have a lot of stuff that's going on. And this is another reason that people are poor. Remember Sheeta on the loose? I watched her videos. Sheeta doesn't want to do anything entrepreneur. She don't want to work extra. She wants to do what she wants to do and she wants 100% passive income. And there's nothing wrong with that per se for someone, because Sheeta actually worked really hard and prepared for her future. But there are people who are not like Sheeta on the loose. There are people who don't want to work who don't want to be responsible for nothing and they're they're feeling like like i said social media can make a lot of money and they're feeling that they want to be a social media star and i'm about to hurt some feelings with no talent no talent whatsoever shout out to trey mo jones and keisha if you don't know who trey mo is he has a channel he's a comedian and he does these skits with this puppet, which are hilarious, which are hilarious. They do all kinds of stuff. And he subscribed to this channel and he has talent. 
He has talent. He can sing. They can do the puppet thing. He has talent. And you have a whole bunch of people who pretend or hope that they're going to make money on social media. Like this, this is one of the things that cracks me up. There are people who are morbidly obese. I'm not talking about 10, 20 pounds or weight. No, no. I'm talking about where there's a fat sack hanging over their knee because they're 400, 500, 600 pounds. And there's this chick on TikTok and she's dancing in the bikini with all that hanging out. Frankly, I think it's disgusting. I was like, but we have got into a society where people are applauding this fat morbidly. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not talking about like, you know, she's just chubby. Chubby, I, I've dated chubby chicks. I've dated chicks with a little belly. I felt that that was cute, you know, more push, more, more, more cushion for the pushing. But this chick has got to be 500 pounds and she's dancing and she's doing stuff. And then there's people who dance in the videos and like dudes rubbing his, his dick up against her. And I'm just like, ew, that's nasty, ew. But once again, this is part of the social media. She's a social media savage because she's put all of her deficiencies out and people watch it. And I don't know if they're waiting for her to have a heart attack while she's doing something. I don't know. I don't know. But another reason that people don't have money is they don't want to do anything. And I was talking about this on uh, my other channel, playing the game, starting businesses. Here's the reality. You're not going to be rich anytime soon being who you are. Once again, I talked about who I used to be. I used to be a person that had to borrow $20 from my boy Tyrone because I was broke. Because all my money would come in and go out and pay bills. And I actually fixed that problem when I was living in the boarding house. Once again, I got me another job and I saved every penny from that second job and that created my emergency fund. And that behavior shift in who I was that like when times are good, we need to save money. We need to put money here. And that is who I am today. I can hold on to some money. I have no need to spend money. Once again, the story of my Porsche. I wanted that Porsche in 2017. I could have bought it in 2017, but it would have hurt. And I didn't want it to hurt. So what I did, I didn't buy it in 2018. I didn't buy it in 2019. I bought it in 2020. Delayed gratification. I didn't just go out and get it because I can get it. I sat down, I constructed a plan, and I was able to go to the Porsche dealership. And if you know the story, I bought another Porsche, a 2017 Porsche, paid cash for it, drove it out the dealership, owning it, and I wanted something a little bit more sporty, so I upgraded, and I went back to the Porsche dealership like three months later and got myself a fancier one, the red one, and paid cash. So in about three months, I went through five cars, sold my Audi, sold my BMW X5M, Bought another BMW X5M. First time I ever bought a car that I did not test drive before I paid for it. And I, I did that to treat myself because I had worked really, really hard and created some income revenue streams that like 2020 was the best financial year I've ever had in life. And I treated myself because I'm not pathologically cheap. And also another reason that people don't have money. They never plan to make money. There is no planning. There is no staging. There is no posturing. They just go out and live and hope for the best. Hope for the best. None of this stuff is wealth building behavior. None of it. Because I've talked to some of my friends and it's a similar thing. I have some friends who have a business and we're just talking. I said, let me ask you a really personal question. Like how much money do you have in your checking account? 
And they were like, hold on. They went on their phone and it was like 650,000. They had created a revenue stream where money was coming in so fast, it was literally stacking up in their checking account. And he's an investor. He's an investor in the stock market. And he's like, okay, I'm probably gonna move 300,000 out my checking account into some stocks and bonds because there's some stuff I've been looking at. He doesn't like take his cash and as soon as he gets it, he invests it. He gets a chunk of cash and then he has a strategy and then he goes out and buys. And this guy lives in a house that is a million dollar house that's been that's paid off, drives cars, and he and his wife say that if they could get by on three, 3K a month because they don't have no bills. They have no bills. See, this, this is one of the things that happens when you develop wealth building behaviors. Once again, plural, behaviors. It's not a behavior, it is behaviors. Holding on to money managing your life and this is something that i was teaching because you know if you have a holding company and you own the holding company and you do something stupid and you get sued guess what the holding company's head is on the chopping block because that's one of your assets like i once again i'm a speeder i've had that porsche up to 155 miles per hour you know when I did that? Two o'clock in the morning when there was no one else on the road. Because when you're going that fast and there's other traffic, you will run up on people like, they will just, it's like a video game. It's like, bam, there's a car, bam. I mean, you cannot drive that fast with a bunch of people on the road because you will wreck. So I did it at two o'clock in the morning on 400 and I was zooming, but there was no one else on the road. Uh, the traffic was extremely light because essentially I would see some tail lights and I just get over and pass them. I don't do stupid, reckless things. I don't do it. Just don't do it because this is one of the reasons that will keep you poor. This is one of the things that will keep you poor. So once again, number one wealth building behavior is the ability to hold on to money. And all of my friends who have money have this ability. It's like a superpower. Like, how many, how many people you know can let $650,000 stack up in their checking account and don't have to spend it instantly? Once again, we've seen this with the stimulus economy. When those stimulus checks come out, people stimulate the economy. They start spending money. They don't hold it. They don't put it in a the bank. They don't do an emergency fund. They don't invest in a course or something. They just spend and spend and spend and spend. And this is one of the reasons that the average person is living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, honestly, what I have seen with some of these folks and the financial decisions, because like, if I'm your friend and we have open communication and you're telling me about your situation, I will advise you correctly. I will tell you exactly what you need to do. And I recently had a friend who, great resignation. And I was like, okay, let's sit down. Let's talk about this. How much money cash on hand do you have? And he says, I got $80,000. Okay, good. What are your liabilities? I got a car payment. Okay, and I got a mortgage. So his liabilities were about $8,000 a month. He has a job where he makes almost $200,000 a year. And I was like, based on what you told me, you're not in a position to quit your job because you have literally 10 months of money to live on. And he's like, wait a minute, when you put it like that, it doesn't sound as, because in his mind, it's like, I got 80K, 80K I'm good. 10 months will go like that. My friend who quit her job, she took a year off, her money disappeared within one year. It took her, I don't know, 10 years to get that money. So she spent what it took her 10, 15 years to accumulate in one year. Cause she didn't, and like, if I had known, cause I didn't really know, I didn't really know what her situation was. If I had known, I would have urged her to secure a form of income. And there is a, there's, there's a certain type of chick that I will never ever date because they will consistently do things 
to create economic situations, economic harm, like one of the things, like these tickets. There was a girl I was dealing with and she was a drinker and she didn't get one DUI, she got two DUIs in one month. And the DUI typically costs you $10,000 per DUI. So she had created a situation where she needed $20,000 quick, fast, in a hurry, and the rest of her life was melting down. The woman I'm dating right now is calm, stable. See, the older you get, stability is more attractive than hot impulsiveness because uh, I talked about Bailey and the older people know about Bailey. Bailey was ridiculously hot. Blue green eyes that kind of sparkled in the sun. Beautiful chick. But this chick had been arrested five times. She was a hothead. She was impulsive. And I was just like, this is a liability because if you're dating someone and you reach that magical moment where you say those three little words, I love you, her problems become your problems. That will be the expectation. And whenever I'm dealing with someone like that, before we get to that point, I cut them loose because I do not want to be putting out fires. Like the girl I'm dating now, she has no debt. She has no debt, none. That's what I like. That's what I like. I like, oh, no debt. You live your life in orderly. And we were having a conversation the other day and she was just like, she's like, I, my friend circle is changing. I just can't deal with folks who have nothing going on. And we're very much in alignment in that agreement. I do not date women that cost me money. I don't do it. I don't do it because I know what a uh, money pit that can be. Like one chick I was dating, cute as she wanted to be. And she had the best fake breasts that I've ever seen in my life. You couldn't tell they were fake. You could feel them, you could suck on them, you couldn't tell they were fake. And they were beautiful. And her life was a dumpster fire. I had to cut her loose. Because every time I would talk to her, she's like, well, I need this, I need this, I have this situation, and I need, I was like, mm -mm. no, 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 no. So this is something that many rich men who are married did really well. They picked the right wife. And this is, and once again, Go to Forbes and look up the richest people in the world and you will see a lot of these dudes have attractive women, but they're not hot. There's a reason. Because, once again, I said the ghetto P. I ain't gonna lie. I've had some ghetto pussy. And it's some of the best pussy ever. Because they're crazy. And there's some about crazy pussy that just makes it so good makes it so good and I had to divest myself and fortunately I have skills I can bring a girl in who's not sexually adventurous and I can teach her how to be sexually adventurous that works a lot better than getting someone who's already that way because there's usually a lot more that comes with it than just a good sex and um, one of the things is you, you, you get a certain level of craziness that can cost you money, that can cost you time, that can cost you your freedom. So another reason that people are poor is they make bad romantic decisions. This will keep you like, one, I have a client who got a chick pregnant and he's sweating bullets because this chick knows what he's worth. And the girl I think is four years old and. You know, it's like until he knows what she's going to do because she can go back every two years for what's called reconsideration and get more money out of him because she has this kid. That is one of the biggest financial mistakes that many NFL and NBA players make. You got a $20 million contract and you get a girl pregnant. Excuse me. A girl gets pregnant because she wants to have your baby because she knows for the next eight years she gonna get a check in some states she's gonna get a check into 21 and she's gonna get a sizable check in courts even though your income comes down they don't want to change the the custody the uh, 
child support award. They, they really don't like changing these child support awards. They really, really don't like it. And that is one of the other mistakes because um, if you know, if you've been around, I had a situation where someone I was dealing with intentionally got pregnant. And then the goal was for me to raise our child and she'd be with me during the day. She didn't like that. So what did she do? She left the state. Now we had an agreement. I had it recorded through emails and stuff. And she, when she left the state, what's the first thing she did? She went to child support court. And then uh, I had someone go through, you know, I was thinking about doing TurboTax. My information was already in TurboTax. They were trying to figure out how much money she was gonna get. And I fought her tooth and nail and I got my child support case dismissed. Because I am not a father in my opinion. She took the child, I have not seen her or the child. I have no clue of what's going on with the child. So technically, I'm not a father. And she took that from me in a willful manner, but because I recorded that and I had enough sense to go to court and I got her case dismissed. And she's, you know, doing whatever. I have no clue. So I avoided that. I avoided that because I was willing and able and was looking forward to taking care of my child. But because she wanted a check, she did not want a father. This is the number one reason that a lot of men are not in their child's lives. It's not because they the men didn't want to, it's the mother had a point to prove. And a lot of these women are silly. And yes, I had messed with the ghetto. This is what I got for messing with the ghetto. Because, you know, I was sitting there thinking, there were so many chicks that I was fucking, that if they had gotten them pregnant, we wouldn't have went through one-tenth of the drama. It's like, wait a minute, you're gonna take care of the baby? Cool. Like, the chick I'm dating right now, if she got pregnant, I would not have none of these issues with her. None of these issues. I was like, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Okay, boom. Wouldn't have none of these issues with her. But one of the things that we as men have got to understand, we gotta be careful with our seed. We gotta be really, really careful with our seed because uh, I was pissed because only children I had before this were, were a product of marriage. And in my mind, if I had any more children, I was gonna be married. And this is one of the things that I have uh, been really careful with is if I have any more kids, I'm gonna be married. I'm gonna be married. None of this weird child, I'm, I'm not doing that bullshit. I'm not doing that bullshit. So once again, and I learned a lot from that lesson because it didn't have to go down that way, but because she was impulsive, she was ghetto, she was bad with money. Uh, once again, a lot of the behaviors that I, that are the antithesis of many of the things I hold to be true and dear, she embodied all of that. Once again, I am, my name is Glendon Cameron, and I'm, the ghetto P got me. The ghetto P got me. Because that was some of the best damn pussy I ever had in my life. And then the other 90% of the relationship was weird. We were in bed, it was good. We were out of bed, we fought. We had issues. Because we were so dissimilar as people. And I will never, never do that to myself again. Never. Girl I'm dating right now, she's an introvert and she's a nerd. I like that. I like that. I can deal with that. I am not dealing with any more ghetto P. So, once again, this is the collective of why people don't have money because they have an absence of wealth building skills. And it's going to get worse as we go through this global reset because people are going to be scratching to get money any way they can. It's going to get worse. This is Glendon Cameron. This is all I got for you. Please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section and I will talk to you in the next one.